morning, brethren. You're welcome to today's family devotional. My name is Pastor Yemi Omoboyega, and uh, my wife, Pastor Mrs. Omoboyega, is with me. Um, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. Daddy, we worship you. Daddy, we adore you. We glorify your holy name. Accept our thanksgiving in Yehoshua's name. Almighty Father, we thank you for the grace of being alive, even to propagate your gospel this morning. We thank you for your help, for your support, for your supplies, for keeping us safe, for our nation, for us as individuals, for planet Earth and all her contents, and for your heavenly places. Daddy, be thou exalted in Yehoshua's name. Thank you, Daddy, because you are the one that answered prayers. Thank you for the various visions of the night, visions of the day, and various dreams, and various things you revealed, and the ones fulfilled, already fulfilled, the ones yet to be fulfilled. Thank you, Lord, for it pleased you to be revealing to us those secret things. Accept our thanksgiving in Yehoshua's name. Lord, we come before your throne of mercy this morning. All our iniquities, please forgive us in Yehoshua's name. Mm. Grant us the grace to also forgive others in Yehoshua's name. Mm. Today, Lord, speak with us like never before. Today, let your presence be felt in our lives better than it was before. Teach us yourself today. Let the Holy Spirit come down and release exactly what you want your people to know to them and prepare their own hearts for understanding in Yehoshua's name. Thank you, Father. In Yehoshua's name we pray. Kindly remember to share these videos always. Also press the like button, press the bell so that you get notified when we uh, upload new videos. God bless you. Now we are taking our Bible passage from the book of Daniel chapter 4. We are going to, it's supposed to come from verse 1, but let's take it from verse 8 because of time. God bless you. But at last, Daniel came before me. His name is Bethshazer, according to the name of my God. In him is the spirit of the Holy God. And I told the dream before him, saying, Bethshazer, sheep of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the Holy God is in you, and no secret troubles you. Explain to me the visions of my dream that I have seen, and its interpretation. These were the visions of my head while on my bed. I was looking, and behold, a tree in the midst of the earth, and its height was great. The tree grew and became strong. Its height reached to the heavens and it could be seen to the ends of the whole earth. It lives very, it lives were lovely, its fruits abundant, and in it was food for all. The beast of the field found shade under it. The birds of the heavens dwelt in its branches, and all flesh was fed from it. I saw in the vision of my head while on my bed, and there was a washer, the only one, coming down from heaven. He cried aloud and said, Thus, Chop down the trees and cut off its branches, strip off its leaves and scatter its fruits. Let the beast get out from under it and the birds from its branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump and roots in the earth, bound with a band of iron and bronze. In the tender grass of the field, let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let him graze with the beast on the grass of the earth. Let his head be changed from that of a man. Let him be given the heart of a beast, and let seven times pass over him. This decision is by the decrees of the washer, and the sentence by the word of the holy ones, in order that the living may know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, gives it to whomever he wills, and sets over it the lowest of men. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now you, Bethsaida, declare its interpretation. Since all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known to me the interpretation, but you are able, for the Spirit of the Holy God is in you. Then Daniel 
whose name was Bethsaida, was astonished for a time, and his thoughts troubled him. So the king spoke and said, Bethsaida, do not let the dream or its interpretation trouble you. Bethsaida answered and said, My Lord, may the dream concern those who hate you, and its interpretation concern your enemies. The tree that you saw, which grew and became strong, whose height reached to the heavens, and which could be seen by all the earth, whose leaves were lovely, and its fruits abundant, in which was food for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, and in whose branches the birds of the heaven had their own. It is you, O king, you who have grown and become strong, for your greatness has grown and reaches to the heaven, and your dominion to the end of the earth. And inasmuch as the king saw a watcher, a holy one coming down from heaven and saying, Chop down the trees and destroy it, but leave its stump and roots in the earth, bound with a band of iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field. Let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let him graze with the beast of the field, till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king. And this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord, the King. God bless you. Thank you, Ma. I think that's uh, okay for our need. May you not fall from grace to grass. May I not fall from grace to grass. May the Lord help us to complete our race and finish well in Yehoshua's name. And the topic before us this morning is the dangers of leadership assignment. The dangers of or in leadership assignment. We give glory to God. All of us are leaders. You are either, I mean, some of us are even born leaders. The first born is the leader of the siblings that are, that follow him or her. The husband is the head of the family, leading the house. The um, wife is a leader that manages the entire household, including the husband, the children, the larger family, the the in fact, the two families, hers and her husband's. Then, the person that is in the office, any position, you are a leader. You have somebody subordinate to you. You are a leader. And um, the community, the obas, the chiefs, you are leaders. Everybody is a leader. Then in Christian fold, our geos are leaders. Our workers are leaders. Even being a Christian, being having accepted the Lord as your the Lord Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, you have become a leader because everybody is looking at you as an example of righteousness. So if you fail there. You know what it means. So leadership is everywhere. There are also situational leaders when there are problems and somebody just was gifted to arise and take charge and render the storm to calm down. You are a leader. Now, but leadership assignment is a very dangerous one. Leadership assignment is a very dangerous one. The one that we read this morning about King Nebuchadnezzar, this is a second dream. We've had the first one. This second one is about what will happen to him. He was even lucky that prophets came. I mean, he had a dream himself. He's a prophet, Jeremiah 1.5. 
Every one of us we are prophets because God reveals certain things to us. It may not be as often. It may not be a professional prophet. But so long as God relates with you through dreams or through visions, through any means that he talks to you, you can even hear God's voice directly. He was warned about what was coming. But unfortunately, it still happened that he fell into temptation. And eventually, but God just had mercy upon him. Everything foretold about him came to be, which means sometimes when a leader will fall, no advice will bring him up. Thank God for Nebuchadnezzar, he had a second chance. Now, there are similar examples in the Bible. The king that wanted to go to war and consulted with 450 um, prophets. But before then, God had placed the spirit of... So, as I said, the king was like, he wanted to do what he wanted to do, but he consulted. Good step that he tried to consult, just like many of us do, so that we don't make mistakes. But God had already entered into those poor prophets. They are true prophets originally. But at that moment, because God has a, a mission to perform in the life of that king, what happened? God placed the spirit of lie on all of them. And it said the same thing that when if the king went, he will come back. But only one left. The spirit of God still made that king to inquire for that. There are no other prophets in this land. How about Micaiah? And he said, go fetch me, Micaiah. And incidentally, so King uh, Micaiah was fetched for a prophet, and he came, and incidentally, you see, the way God works, you cannot, God works in a mysterious way. He can use your enemy or seeming enemy to be the one that he will use to rescue you. But because you have grown into enmity with that person, you will not listen. Because only if God really wants you to pass through that experience. So and uh, Micaiah and this king, they were never in good terms. Because Micaiah will tell what God told him, not what the king wanted to hear. Whereas the king wanted to hear what he wanted to hear. So this time around, it played out again that the king called him and Micaiah told him that if you went, you will not return. And Micaiah, in his arrogance, another temptation, said, you said something contrary to what everybody had said. Therefore, this is your own. I don't believe it. Let me put you in dungeon, in the in the prison, in custody. If I went and came back, I would then know what to do with you. But the the Micaiah said, if you went and come back, it means the Lord has not sent him. And he went, he never returned. That will not be your portion. Your ears will not be deaf to good counsel. In Yehoshua's name, to godly counsel in Yehoshua's name. Now, what are we saying? The dangers of leadership assignment. God can raise anybody, anywhere to become a leader. Apart from the Leadership by birth, that you are a leader, maybe you are firstborn, or you are the first um, one that came up, and so on and so forth. There is leadership by assignment. For instance, in the entire family, God can choose even the last born to be the first. In the sense that if it's a poverty, for instance, that poverty has dealt with very well, God can choose the youngest in the family.
to be the financial leader of that family because God will so prosper that young one that he will be seen as the arrowhead of the family. And in that sense, everything will work for him. It will prosper and it will be so well with him. God does these things. He could choose the first, he can choose the last, he should choose the... But what is important is that in leadership, the greatest lead, uh, challenge that a leader has is to think that he is who he is or she is whom she is by virtue of his wisdom knowledge, understanding, or that it is because he understood so well or she understood so well that he is able to amass the wealth that the Lord has given to him. The purpose for which God has sent him or her is to liberate that family from poverty, support everybody to the best of his ability, but be careful in his attitude, <laughs> doing those things without grumbling, without holding, um, doing it without doing it in malice, without thinking that it is him or she, he or she that is doing it, but knowing fully well that it is God that is using him to do it. So long as somebody who is endowed with a position or with anything to bless others, realizes that it is not him but God that is using him to do it, that person will be cautious, will be humble, and will do the assignment that the Lord has given to him or her without being um, um, how do I call it? Without being, uh, without showing pride, because one of the greatest temptations of such a leader is leadership. Is leader uh, is pride. Parents will say, "Parents, you are responsible for the care of your children. You don't take care of them, and you are now saying, telling the children later when the repercussions come that." Because you are the mother, you are the father, you are the mother, you do not me. You have the opportunity of raising your children. You didn't do it. And then the children now are playing back the video. And then you, you, you now decree that because the Bible says in, uh, Gen in uh, Exodus 20, 12, that children should honor your parents, their parents, because if they don't honor their parents, their days will not be long in the land that the Lord has given to them. It's a lie. It will not work. Because you yourself have violated the law that the God Almighty placed down for you. Train your child the way it should go so that it will not depart from it when it grows up. That is Proverbs 22, 6. And then um, that parents should not provoke their children to anger. You have provoked them because you didn't take good care of them. Now, the same way, in terms of leadership, when you are placed in a position, use that position. Know that it is God that places you there. It is not. There are a lot of people suitable for that position that God kept aside. But when you get to that position, make sure it is God. Make sure you have acknowledged God that is the one that gave it to you. And whatever you want to do with that position, do it in such a way that it will glorify God. Don't sin in between. Don't give conditions, man-made conditions. And don't withdraw that support that you are supposed to give to all those that the Lord has sent you to. Because you think it is your money, it is your wealth, it is... No, 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 no. It's God's wealth given to you to satisfy the needs of 
the people that comes across your way. It is not your money. It is not your wealth. It is God's wealth. Otherwise, you will see yourself giving certain conditions that will make life deep. In fact, when you are doing something and the people you are doing it to begins to begin to say, ah, you've made yourself a lord over us. Be careful. Be sensitive to people's reactions. Be sensitive to how they perceive. That is why, you see, position of leadership is very delicate and very dangerous, honestly speaking. Look at how Samuel himself nearly missed it. Look at how Moses, as a result of anger, missed it. God says, touch the stone. He hit the thing and ordinary water that should flow for them to drink killed them. Don't be like, don't do like what Moses did, that you are sent to help people. The utterances, your attitude, everything you say around the help you want to render makes the person to commit suicide. Make the person to feel that God has not made him or her. Make the person that you are talking about, talking to, feel that, ah, why am I like this? How you manage the situation that the Lord placed you, the Lord places you, matters a lot. Therefore, you need to be sensitive to what people are saying. You need to be sensitive to what, I mean, don't see yourself that, oh, I'm now rich. I cannot relate with the poor. No, 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 no. God has sent you. You are their evangelist. Indeed, you need to give them more audience than your fellow rich people. Do the assignments that the Lord has sent you. It is one person or two that the Lord will send to a family to liberate that family. If God has placed you in that position, do everything you can. Don't be self-centered. Don't think, oh, it is my power, it is my money. It is. Just fear God with whatever you are doing. The temptation is to become proud and arrogant. And when that comes, it's a dangerous one. Look at King Nebuchadnezzar. God told, like I said, God had helped him, at least by revealing what will happen to him. God is helping you to hear what the Spirit is saying, even now. That when you get to the juncture where God has placed you in a position to be a redeemer to people, don't withdraw it. Don't be arrogant. Mind whatever you say. Let your actions reflect humility. And never, in fact, people like you can never be angry. If you are angry, you know it was anger that Moses was angry that caused his problem. King Nebuchadnezzar saw it coming. And revelation was given to him. But unfortunately, he did not heed don't be like him. With the revelation that was given to Kingdom Kadrizar himself and the interpretation given to him by Daniel, he wasn't supposed to fall victim of what has happened. Although God has predicted it, that God has made said, I made him my deputy. And again, God said, everything he did, he will still suffer. The, the Babylonians will still suffer the penalty. Because he used God used Nebuchadnezzar to punish the Israelites. But God said, they too will be punished. May your case not be like that. That God sent you to help people and along the line, you fall by the wayside and God now turns to you and begins to punish you. That will not be our portion. That's why these messages are vital for us. Let's be very careful how we manage 
situations. If you are in a position in an office, how many people have you helped? Starting with your family, going to your friends, going to outside. It's not just God has placed you there to reproduce or replicate yourself there from different sources, from your family fold, from your community fold, from your from Nigeria as a Nigerian, from the world at large. Then you are a leader in the church. Do you know how do you see? Please go and study Second Corinthians chapters eight and nine. The monies that you are collecting in the church are supposed to be meant to be distributed for the people so that the rich will not get richer, the poor will not get poorer, according to their needs. But when we now concentrate the larger portion of the money into uh, personal assets or into building cathedrals such that we neglect what the people will eat and immediate attention that is required. And we are now building schools that children of the church cannot, of members of the church cannot attend. We need to be careful. Another thing that God can use to bring down somebody who is placed in a position of authority is, you see, it will make them to feel so big. I've seen a geo that feels that he so knows the Bible that nobody else can ever understand the Bible as he did. But unfortunately, in if God withdrew understanding from him, these days is kind of ridiculed because the utterances, the ministrations he ministered, they were contrary to what the Bible teaches us, especially on tithing. It's a good example. God has removed tithing, jettisoning it, the law. But he today is saying that if you cannot make heaven unless you pay tithes. Hebrews 7 has, I mean, as educated, as knowledgeable as everything he is, he simply filled that text because God wanted to we thank God for social media. Recordings are now available. And, and that's what he's teaching his followers. And today, things are no longer the way it was for him. Because and then you can become so arrogant that you want more power. This GO wants the power in the government. He wants the power everywhere. The way power in the church. He got to a stage, he started preaching only in the church, their church, that there are saints for marriage purposes. So, you can see, God can bring anybody low. Don't be a victim. And the temptation is always there. When you don't, any position you are, if you are angry, remember it's God that placed you in that position. Think that <laughs> anything can happen. Do everything in humility. God is a no respecter of anybody. Whatever position God has placed you, it pleased him to put you there. It pleased him to use you to go and fulfill Matthew 22, 37 to 39. Love your God. Give your substances to the house of God, to the men of God, and then Love your neighbor as yourself. Give your substance that the Lord has placed upon you. It's not yours, it's God's. Let it spread to and do it without condition. Without giving condition. Because when you are giving condition, you have violated the rule of God. God gave it to you without condition. The only condition is go and spread it out. Meet the needs of the needy irrespective of what led them to their 
state. Just do what God asks you to do and do it in love and relate well with them. God bless you. Brethren, the position of leadership, the assignment of leadership is a very dangerous one. Any little thing can make one to fall. I pray for you, I pray for myself that whether in the, within the family, whether outside the family, in the church of God, in the community, wherever I find myself as a leader, wherever you find yourself as a leader, God Almighty will enable us to understand that we are placed there for a purpose and that that purpose has to be met unconditionally. God bless you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. Daddy, we bless you. We honor your holy name. Thank you indeed for how you came in this morning. And we appreciate you for the various examples you gave to us. I remember that rich man in the New Testament that says, I, with my wealth, with my knowledge, with everything, I have gathered these things. And he says, my heart, sit down, enjoy yourself. And God says, tonight, your soul is demanded of you. He never saw the see the second day. I pray. My brethren who are listening to me, myself, every one of us, I pray, help us to overcome that temptation when it comes before us to be proud or to arrogate ourselves into the position of God. Please help us to overcome it by humbling and remembering you that you are the one that placed us there in Yehoshua's name. Father, I pray again. Those who have made the mistake, please, you restored Nebuchadnezzar. Please restore them. Bring them to the position of realization. Bring us all to be subject to you because we will not miss it when we are subject to you. In Yehoshua's name, we have prayed. Amen. Please share these messages. God bless you.